Um, this wasn't part of my original questions, but I guess outside of what uh, you two just shared, uh, Michelle and Melanie, how do you get this history? Like your grandparents, did they tell you about it as you were growing up? Like, did you just kind of hear it in passing or were you very intentional about like asking these questions? Like how did these, like how did you build this history for yourself and how do you share it? Yeah, it was my great grandma and shout out to you knowing your great, great grandma. Cause I didn't realize until I got older how many people didn't have their great grandma along with them for the ride. And she would show our culture, I guess, or our history through her actions. So like she always fed us like natural herbs. I remember she would feed us um, this powder substance. I don't even remember what it was. Like we would all, me and my sisters and my cousins would line up and like um, starch. She would feed us starch. And we was like, what? we didn't know. We just come in, do the, and she always just spoke to us. Like I remember I, I carry her with me in spirit now, but she always, we just hung out a lot with our great grandma. Like when she got sick and got her leg amputated, we were all just was around her bed and just hang out. And I mean, she just poured into us through her actions. And I feel like what I'm remembering mostly is through the food, but also there was, there was just a story behind it with the food that I can't like grasp, but I know now what the meaning of those foods are, what the stories that she was trying to tell us, I hope that makes sense. And even again with the altar, um, she would make sure that we would go into the sun porch and come, you know, come with her before she lost her leg. And like, I remember just standing in front of the altar as she just had like a Buddha statue on it and like a feather with the peacocks and like pictures of my great uncle, Uncle Joe and them that were twins. And uh, I just remember that essence growing up that she just, she, you know, carried us and taught us through a, a lot through her actions. Um, and through food, our family did a lot through food. Um, so that's that's for me. <laughs> wow, that's so cool. Yeah, on my side, let me see. Uh, my uncle invested in technology back in the 80s. And I can remember being in Michigan one spring break, and he decided to take my great grandmother um, and uh, and interview her and ask her, where did you come from? So fast forward, I guess it was probably about almost 20 years ago when I was fishing through some VHSs and I discovered this tape uh, because I had had, again, I'm looking for answers and I, you know, I, I was there and I remember watching it, but I don't remember everything she said. And that's when I found out like where she was born, um, which confirmed that, you know, she's pretty much been in the same area for, for all of her life, uh, not really leaving it to, to travel much. Um, unlike her um, kids um, and grandkids. Uh, and so for my mom's side, that's what I learned. And again, like I, I grew up spending summers in the rural parts of, of Arkansas, but unfortunately I didn't think to ask any questions. All I thought it was so boring and there's no cable TV. So that is disappointing. And that's why I know I've made it a point to tell my kids, you've got to learn where you come from. Um, and then on my father's side, it was strictly because my dad was kind of in and out, unfortunately. It was uh, strictly just at family reunions because they had had family reunions for years and years where they would come together every other year. And somebody would had had an actual written record of at least that particular side of the family, because obviously her her name uh, was my maiden name. But it was a different name because uh, it's my maternal grandmother. Uh, and so that particular line, I could hear just like where they came from. And then I always heard my father say there was a preacher in his line. Uh, and so he's like, I recall, I think there was a preacher. But it seems like it was a very strict uh, upbringing, upbringing. And I'm sure that some of it was because of being in, in the South. Um, and, and the way of survival was through prayer. Um, and asking God's protection as they traveled the back roads of these rural areas where they often had sundown laws, um, which is funny. Only now did I realize that some of those laws existed until the 1980s when I was a, was I was a young child because my grandmother, great grandmother, would act very strange when the sun went down, and I never understood why. She never told me why, but now as an adult, I look back and I was like, ah, that's why. 